right. Very good morning. Welcome to another episode of Ask CyberArk, the only podcast focused on answering questions from our partners, customers, and practitioners. I'm your host, Jeffrey Koch, coming to you from CyberArk Singapore. Our guest today is Mr. Yossi Dantes, Director of Product Management for Endpoint Privilege Management, or EPM, joining us from our HQ in Israel. Welcome, Yossi. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me, Jeffrey. I'm happy to join you. Yes. So, Yossi, a lot of our audience might not uh, be familiar with yourself. So, would you like to take a few moments to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Yossi Dantes. I uh, started with CyberArk in uh, 2013. Uh, in the product management department, uh, managing the uh, Sabor Cloud Strategy. Uh, wow, 2013, it's uh, so long ago. I, I remember <laughs> that, uh, that back then we had a small office uh, uh, on one floor here in Israel, and now we, are, we, we spread on over 10 floors in our own uh, high building, so, so quite a jump. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> Uh, in late 2015, uh, Sabo acquired two companies, uh, Cybertinel and, and Vufinity, uh, and merged them to what we know today as Endpoint Privilege Manager. Uh, I was part of the uh, due diligence team uh, and decided to take over product management uh, for EPM, and I had been growing with it since. Wow. It's been a great journey, and uh, I remember the Vufinity acquisition. So that was in my uh, previous job at a time. And I think, frankly, uh, it came to me as a surprise because uh, before that, I always known uh, CyberArk to be, you know, uh, a password manager, a session recorder. You know, going into the endpoint space was, uh, uh, was very unexpected uh, when I read that news. And after I did a bit of research and learning about Vufinity, learning about what it does, then suddenly I, I had this great uh, epiphany, uh, frankly. You know, it, it just dawned on me that uh, being able to take the privilege and putting beyond, right, just on infrastructure, but down to the end point uh, would solve a lot of problem. I, I had so much uh, challenges in the old days. Right and uh, frankly, I'm I'm guilty of uh, a lot of bad bad practice, right? Uh, as I used to be an IT administrator at the time, and uh, I have scripts, I have password files, and there are things that I need to use, and there's just no good way for us to secure it, right? So and credential theft has always been a big problem, uh, you know. I think back then, uh, NTM hash, uh, you know, uh, pass the hash attacks was first found out. And it was a great uh, issue. So, you know, the idea of using privilege or protecting privilege down to the end point was, uh, was just to me mind blowing because it opened up such a huge world of uh, opportunities uh, in terms of how we can protect uh, customers at end point. I think it's just simply uh, beautiful. Exactly. Cyborg uh, vision has always been shaped by our uh, customers and our partners. Uh, when customers share with, uh, with us their challenges, their problems, their risks, uh, what keeps them up at night, we listen. Uh, Sabarak listen and, and considers how we can build our products and offering uh, to better help our customers uh, and protect our customer, right? This is the, the, uh, the essence of Sabarak, how to protect the best our customer, which in turn shapes our vision and our, and our products. Uh, Take, for example, uh, uh, the, the problem that you shared earlier, uh, right, regarding the credential and password uh, cache on the endpoint. Uh, that's, that's a common challenge that, uh, that is shared uh, by many, many customers. Customers tell us that uh, they just want to prevent theft of, of these credentials uh, without having to spend a lot of time and effort uh, to perform application analysis or forensics, we listened and eventually uh, created a, a credential self-protection feature in EPM uh, as part of our vision of uh, privilege threat protection and the ability to prevent any, any privilege abuse on the, on the endpoint. 
Well, since you mentioned uh, credential theft protection, uh, I think it brings to one of our first questions from our customers uh, and our prospects. Uh, we get a lot, right? When we say credential theft protection, a lot of customers are naturally, you know, they're very skeptical, right? Because credential theft protection, it, it sounds too good to be true. It sounds like uh, almost like uh, magic, if you will, you know? Uh, you know, what, what do you think? Uh, can you share yeah, with us yeah. uh, what's the magic? <laughs> exactly. Trust me, there's no, there's no magic involved in, uh, in credential self-protection. Uh, the concept behind it, uh, behind it is, is very simple. Uh, many applications uh, allow users to store a password in the application itself to make it easier for signing. Uh, this is a very common feature that you will see in, in all browsers like uh, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, remote access client like, uh, like uh, Putty, RDP Manager, uh, different IT tools like VMware Workstation, FileZilla, DBA tools, cloud uh, CLIs, a lot of applications and most users uh, use this password caching feature because it's so convenient, right? Who, who wants who wants to retype password every time they access a system or a website? Uh, now, attackers uh, know this behavior very well. Uh, that's why this is one of the first things um, uh, the attacker will do once, once they gain access to a targeted uh, uh, endpoint, uh, which is to steal password uh, stored or cached in this application. What EPM do is to use privilege to restrict access uh, to this password location for only uh, the specific application that's supposed to use it. Uh, it, it uh, and, and no other application basically. For example, uh, let's take a Chrome password store. Um, it's, it can only be accessed by Chrome, right? An EPM will block uh, uh, access to the Chrome password store by any other application or process running on the endpoint. Uh, if, if Mimica, uh, Lasagna, uh, which are common uh, uh, credential harvesting tool um, uh, that used by attackers, or any other malware try to access Chrome credential, it will, it will not be successful uh, because it doesn't have the privilege to access the Chrome credential store. Only Chrome has that privilege. Make sense? Yep, absolutely. So the magic is uh, actually privilege restriction, right? Using privilege to uh, restrict, you know, the legitimate application can access the passwords and everything else uh, will block it, right? Uh, so exactly. just uh, curious, how does uh, credential theft protection work for other form of attacks, other form of malware? Uh, like in the, in the recent uh, couple of months, uh, ransomware is uh, exploding Right, it's been catching up, but in the last couple of months, they're exploding uh, a lot higher. Right, we see that a lot in the news. So, would you be able to share how does uh, credential theft protection uh, help our customers with regards to ransomware? Sure, sure. All cyber laptops, desktops are protected by EPM. Uh, our red team reg regularly uh, conduct red team exercise against the cyber network, and and both our red team uh, and IT security team have attested uh, to the effectiveness of, of EPM protection. Uh, Red Team are finding it uh, harder and harder to complete their mission. Uh, um, and and we, also, we have also received similar feedback from our customers who had uh, security incidents. So, so we know that this works very well in real life. Uh, if with any type of uh, of attack uh, that uh, you know, as I mentioned, the first thing attackers do is to to steal uh, to to seek for a credential to uh, to allow to allow him to elevate uh, uh, elevate permission, and also uh, yeah, some ransomware will will try to steal those uh, credentials as well. Um, and we see that, especially in these COVID-19 days and the new norm of employees working from home with corporate laptops and, and they are outside of the corporate network so they don't have the umbrella or the security umbrella that uh, the organization have inside their network. So uh, how effective is this uh, ransomware uh, protection? 
So again, again, there's no, there's no, there's no magic involved. Uh, this, uh, yeah, um, in EPM we have the ransomware protection uh, feature. Uh, this is again, we listen to our customer, we see what's out there, and we develop uh, functionality uh, in EPM to help customer to be protected. And and there is no magic involved. Uh, this protection has the uh, the ransomware protection has the same concept like the uh, EPRM privilege threat protection that we s discussed earlier. Uh, basically, any process or application that doesn't really need to access those uh, protected files like uh, uh, office documents, spreadsheets, presentations, backup files, photos, and other files will not be allowed to access it uh, if it's not one of the approved applications the organization used. Uh, this protection has been validated by our CyberArk lab team. Uh, you mentioned that Kobe is managing that, uh, that team, uh, where they establish a lab that automatically uh, downloads samples of various type of ransomware on a daily basis, thousands of samples, and run those against the APM policy. To date, uh, up until now, they tested uh, more than 2 million samples of, um, of ransomware and EPM is still 100% uh, success against those ransomware and, and doesn't let it uh, to encrypt files on the, on the endpoint. Uh, I must emphasize, uh, Jeffrey, that the stronger protection um, is the combination of enforcing least privilege and ransomware protection, um, as, as this will break the attack in different steps of the execution. Uh, you know, we, we, we created EPM to allow organization to enforce uh, uh, least privilege on the endpoint, uh, meaning to take away local admin rights from user while doing it in a transparent way, uh, without an impact on, on end user productivity. So, so the combination of the least privilege and the original uh, purpose of EPM and the ransomware protection will, will provide that 100% success. Thanks, Yossi, for sharing, uh, sharing that. If you don't mind, uh, I'd like to move on to the next segment of our podcast. Uh, it's called You Ask, We Answer. So this is where we answer questions that's been uh, fielded by uh, our customers, our partners that we hear a lot, and I'll consolidate. Uh, don't worry, we only ask you EPM related questions, so you'll be within uh, your domain of expertise, right? Uh, so the question, uh, first one, um, so EPM, uh, I think a couple of uh, months ago, almost uh, within the last one year, right, we launched a new feature known as uh, Privilege Dece uh, Deception. Uh, would you like to share uh, what is privilege deception and how do customers uh, use it? Sure, Jeffrey. Uh, and yes, and, and I think that uh, we covered that earlier in, the, in, the, uh, in our conversation. We in Sabak always uh, keep listening to customers. We try to be innovative. And, and privilege deception is, is exactly that. This is innovation coming from, from uh, our labs team. Um, and, and like I shared earlier, attackers always after uh, credentials, right? Once they get into a system. Uh, with privilege deception, uh, EPM basically populates um, your, your credential store with, with fake credentials uh, called lures or traps. Uh, these lures uh, will look real in every way. It will have a username that looks real. Uh, the identity will look real with a recently uh, used timestamp. So the attacker can't really tell that they are fake. When the attacker try to use these laws uh, on actual system, uh, you will know that uh, you have 100% confirmed breach uh, with no false positive because no one else needs to use that, that account, that credential. Um, and of course, because these laws are fake, attackers can't really be uh, logged in to anywhere or use those. So, so surely, uh, pose no risk to your organization. I would imagine for deception to be used in an optimal fashion, 
you almost have to be part of the customer's larger uh, SOC or instance uh, response or detection uh, strategy. Yeah, and, and that, that will be you know, the, the most ideal use case for advanced customer with, uh, with uh, SOC system and, and comprehensive detect and response uh, st strategy. Right, uh, you know, uh, security is a, is a team game and as long as you embrace and integrate uh, those tools together, you get uh, much more security. Um, uh, however, for customers who only have EPM and nothing else, it can still be uh, pretty effective because EPM can still uh, detect intrusion and the, uh, the laws will help to delay uh, uh, and dis distract and, and frustrate the attacker and bind the organization uh, time to react to the, uh, to the attack. So I think one of the uh, uh, feedback that we got from customers is the lure is great, but uh, once, the custom, once the attacker, they've taken the lure, they've taken the bait and they've used it, they find that, hey, this is fake. You know, they're probably going to wise up and they won't take the same lure twice, right? So how do we encounter that? Yeah, uh, well, exactly. Well, but let's, let's, let's start to use uh, an analogy to, uh, like, uh, like fishing. Uh, usually this is done the other way, uh, the other way around, uh, but there is no reason not to use uh, the attacker weapons uh, against them. Uh, the attacker is, is now the fish, and as soon as the, the attacker takes the lure, uh, you've got a fish. You've uh, found out that you are under attack, and which endpoint was attacked, and, and what credential was compromised. Now, once the lure has been taken, uh, you're going to need a new lure to catch the next fish. Uh, with EPM, it's really easy uh, to reset the lure. Uh, just go to the EPM console, uh, set a new lure, uh, a different username, and all endpoints will have a new lure uh, immediately so that it will be fresh for reoccurring and, and new attacks. Um, and, and, and again, the lures are placed in different places. It's not just uh, Windows hashes and password. Uh, we have privilege deception for browser, uh, where attackers know that in many uh, um, there are many AD cr uh, credentials that are stored uh, in the browser cache as well. This is usually happens where uh, when the end user log in to an internal web page uh, or the organization, you know, the internal web page that integrate with LDAP or uh, the, the organization implement a single sign-on SSO using a data provider. So those credentials will be there uh, as low to, uh, uh, to track attacker to use those. Oh, I can see, you know, if a customer tried to do privilege decep uh, deception on their own, right, just manually or with scripts, that's just going to be such a nightmare having to reset the lures every time and everywhere. Uh, I can see EPM just saving them a lot of time uh, and effort just to operationalize uh, something like that. So uh, the next question, also a very common one, is that uh, typically uh, agent uh, solutions has a backend and there's a high operational cost just to maintain the backend uh, system, right? You gotta maintain the database, you gotta patch the OS, you gotta constantly upgrade, you got to do performance monitoring, you gotta do security mon monitoring, uh, vulnerability testing. There's a whole bunch of uh, uh, operational work, right? And I think these are quite consistent. It's not just EPM. Uh, any uh, endpoint solutions, whether it's uh, DLP, EDR, will have the same challenge. So, you know, uh, what can, uh, what does EPM have that can help uh, customers with these uh, challenges? These are actually uh, very good points, uh, Jeffrey, and exactly the, uh, the trend we see with, with customers. Uh, they want to get EPM value without all the, the overhead of managing and deployment of enterprise software. Uh, the best way is to use EPM SaaS. Um, our current strategy uh, for EPM solution is to continuously uh, focus and invest uh, on, on our EPM SaaS platform. Our SaaS operation team will handle all operation and make sure the service is available. 
and our customer just use the service. That's it. Uh, they don't need to worry about uh, any infrastructure to manage. There's no hardware and software costs and licensing for infrastructure. Uh, no operational costs for monitoring, uh, backup, patching, and security, as you mentioned. Uh, they get a service uh, or software that is always up to date, uh, which includes latest and greatest functionality, uh, so they don't need to worry about the software updates. Uh, and, and in terms, it's, it's simple. It's more time allocated to, uh, to the implementation, right? And not the, to the overhead of running uh, the application and, and, and that makes sure uh, that ensure that you run in effective and efficient security in operation. There also uh, also of course the the financial aspect of, of moving into OPEX but uh, I will not touch touch that. Um, as a matter of fact in the next uh, two years we see significantly significantly uh, a more customer uh, adopting the EPM SaaS uh, than the on-premise uh, way of deployment. So when it comes to a uh, SaaS uh, solution, right, a lot of customers are concerned about uh, you know, the age and the maturity. Uh, typically what they see is the more matured uh, SaaS solution are more stable and more reliable and more effective. So would you be able to share with our audience uh, you know, how long EPM SaaS has been around and what's this maturity like? Well, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, EPM was was born as a as a SaaS solution in in two thousand and eight, uh, and and later on we we added uh, the on premise support. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, and 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 as the market continues to evolve, EPM SaaS becomes our leading platform. Um, in in fact, the experience, learning, and operational expertise from EPM SaaS has been extended to build uh, cyber SaaS offerings like a Privilege Cloud, like Calero, and we have more to come uh, very soon. So another common concern from uh, you know, our prospects and customers is uh, you know, the availability of uh, SaaS on, uh, in the regions as well as the data centers that we have. So you know, can you share with us uh, what's the latest uh, locations that uh, EPM SaaS is currently operating at? Sure. Uh, so we, are, we, we run EPM SaaS on, on AWS and it's currently running uh, in seven regions. Uh, we have US, Canada, Europe, uh, UK, Australia, India and Japan. So that uh, we can provide coverage uh, to wide geography, to customer across the globe, and those that are uh, strict with having data uh, on their soil, right? There are a lot of uh, such customer. And also due to the increased demand of EPM SaaS, we will be looking and, and consider to replicate EPM SaaS to uh, more data center around the world uh, to better serve our customer. Um, for service, service availability, um, we have our service availability uh, policy and you can check out the, uh, the service availability and uptype in our online status page. Thank you. And we'll be put, uh, putting a link on uh, that page into the description of this uh, video. Another question is around uh, uh, JIT or just in time. In the last uh, Gartner conference, uh, the it, it was mentioned many times that JIT is a very important function of uh, PAM and security solution. is uh, is one of the important future trends, right? To be able to provide access when needed, and it's a lot more secure than having a perpetual uh, standing, uh, you know, access waiting to be compromised. So, what does EPM have in terms of uh, just in time? Uh, yes, yes, just in time access is, is an important uh, a strategy uh, to privilege access management in, in general. And, and Cyberarc support just in time access for most of our uh, portfolio, uh, Privilege Cloud, Alero, and, and definitely uh, uh, EPM. 
uh, with EPM, we can we can provide just in time um, access and elevation by uh, there are various ways, but uh, in the simple way to explain it is by adding user to a local computer group for a limited time, uh, either by user request or admin decision. Uh, the benefits uh, to enable JIT using EPM is that the enforcement is um, is more robust, meaning the, um, the EPM agent will make sure to uh, revoke the privileges or access given after the uh, the time is expired, without the dependencies on the on the endpoint network status, right? If the endpoint is offline, for example, and also during the uh, uh, um, the period of the high high privilege rights uh, that was granted, every activity the user does is is audited. So yeah, that's uh, that's functionality is part of EPM, very easy to use, very intuitive. Uh, and has a lot of uh, benefits. Thanks, Yossi. So for audience out there, if you are interested to find out more about uh, EPM, uh, we run a regular EPM experience session where we will educate and explain a lot more about what is EPM, how it works, the business problem that it solves, as well as uh, there's a second part to the experience session that we actually take uh, customers on a test drive. So you get to use EPM uh, yourself, right? Uh, and you can. I will leave you with a running set of uh, EPM on your and your on your organization uh, using the uh, the SAS trial for uh, EPM. Last but not least, uh, for existing EPM customers, if you'd like to find out more, uh, we'll be having we'll be having another podcast called Ask the Expert Podcast, where we'll bring together some of our uh, experts around EPM or the best practice on rolling out and administering the uh, EPM process or EPM solution. So do stay tuned for that. Thank you once again and I look forward to seeing you on the next session. Thank you. Thank you Jeffrey. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. It's a great pleasure. Thank you Yossi. Mm -hmm.